We've been reviewing a lot of higher-end laptops for the past few months, but now is the time that we should go back to something more affordable. The laptop that we are showing today is the ASUS VivoBook 15 X OLED M1503QA, and it is only priced at 3,299 ringgit. Incredible value, right? Yes, but why? Let's go through some of the points about this laptop to see clearly the reason why. First of all, this laptop comes with a very straightforward plastic chassis. That's not a problem since this laptop is supremely light in terms of its weight relative to its size. Our unit here also comes with the quiet blue color which looks more like a dark blue color, creating more stealthy kind of look. Opening the lid though, it reveals a 15.6 inch OLED screen, hence the name VivoBook 15X OLED. And now this display is... I don't know why ASUS gave this laptop a supremely high def screen and a high refresh rate at the same time. So this screen has a resolution of 2880 by 1620 and a refresh rate of 120 hz Now, we use our color meter to try out its color accuracy and it's virtually covering 100% of both sRGB and DCI-P3 color gamuts. But the Delta E number is slightly high at 2.811. But then again, you won't really realize it with your own eyes because that Delta E number is just a reference number. As for the maximum brightness, it's at about 410 nits of brightness. It's pretty good, but it's not good enough for situations like uh, if you want to use this laptop out on a very sunny day outdoors. And by the way, this laptop screen has also the same switching behavior between the PWM and DC dimming brightness. So depending on what level of brightness that you're using, you might see this message popping out. But if you want true DC dimming, then you have to head into the MyASUS software, that utility, to select the DC dimming slider. Uh, I once again want to thank ASUS for being so inclusive in all of these features, but the integration with the Microsoft Windows operating system is still a problem. And by the way, the hinge of this lid is also surprisingly well design because it can go flat at 180 degrees. No idea why they decided to include this feature as well but I'm not complaining, it's a very useful feature. And I gotta say the screen of this laptop is supremely amazing especially for a laptop of this price. Literally no other laptops that I have tested at this price range has such a good screen. The keyboard however is something that I don't particularly like. If I am to nitpick then I would have to say that this keyboard feels Rather mushy, the travel distance of the keys are not that long and the keys do not bounce back that quickly hence it feels like whatever I'm pressing just doesn't feel responsive so to speak. But then again this is because that I have used many other laptops and keyboards in the past so for general consumers I would say that this keyboard is actually fine. And hey, this laptop also comes with a number pad and I do remember that you guys were very angry about one of the previous laptops that I have said that the numpad should just be removed. So yeah, you guys win. The numpad is here to stay. Then the trackpad is where things get a little bit funky. The trackpad in itself works fine. It's pretty standard in terms of tracking and the texture feels okay. But the problem is that I always accidentally trigger the zoom, pinch to zoom gesture because I'm not sure if it's due to the palm rejection issue or it's because of the multi-touch detection problem. I usually finish typing and I rest my left hand somewhere around here so my part of my wrist here is always floating on top of the trackpad and then when I try to use the trackpad with my right hand then yeah it always triggers the pinch to zoom gesture. The performance though is also something that I just quickly want to highlight. So the version of this laptop that we have here comes with an AMD Ryzen 5 5600H chipset with 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM and 512 gigs of NVMe SSD. And I tried to play Genshin Impact at the lowest graphical settings at its native 2880 by 1620 resolution. And just as I suspected, the integrated Radeon GPU just couldn't keep up even at 30 FPS. So I switched to a lower resolution to 1080p, which unfortunately means that I have to play the game in window mode, but it can reach about 30 FPS. So yeah, you can play the game in that way. A few more things that I want to highlight about this laptop is of course the ports. They are fairly decent and we also still have a USB 2.0 port at the right side here. Uh, I have no idea why they still include a USB 2.0, but it doesn't hurt to give us USB 3.0, right? 
especially in the year 2022. And the USB Type-C port on the right side here though is a little bit disappointing. It only works as a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port and that's it. I plugged in a portable monitor onto that port and it does not work because this laptop doesn't support DisplayPort Out mode over Type-C. And I also tried plugging in our Ugreen 100W scan charger to this USB Type-C port and it doesn't charge. Which is why I say that the usage of the USB Type-C port as in the utility is limited by its firmware or its hardware for that matter. We also open up the laptop and we have to just remove a few screws behind and the back plate pops off easily. And we have a few things to highlight here. Firstly, the 8 gigs of RAM that we mentioned earlier was already soldered to the motherboard. However, we still have yet another sodium RAM slot that we can add another 8 gigs or 16 gigs of RAM if we want to. Second thing I want to highlight here is that the M.2 SSD slot is accessible but it is already in use so you have to swap to something else and then reinstall Windows on your own wheel. And the Wi-Fi card, this is something that you can also upgrade if you want to because it's just screwed onto the motherboard. And for the battery life, this is something a little bit weird because remember, an OLED screen, if you use it in relatively low brightness, is supposed to be longer in terms of battery life. But because this display has such high refresh rate and also high resolution, the battery life that I've gotten is somewhere around 6 to 8 hours depending on what I'm doing. I'm always Chrome browsing and also listening music on Spotify with some YouTube in the mix. But because of the OLED, responding differently between uh, white background, black background, all of those stuff. So your battery life will vary drastically. And in conclusion, should you actually buy the ASUS VivoBook 15X OLED M1503QA, if I got that correct? Yeah. Let's take a look at the prices again. This laptop comes in two different variants. It's either the Ryzen 5 5600H version or the Ryzen 7 5800H version. The price of both laptops are listed on the screen here. And I gotta say, the value of both of these variants of the laptop is fantastic. But it is especially better in value if you get the Ryzen 5 model. Because let's face it, if you're buying this laptop, I don't think you're gonna play any high-end games on it, so the Ryzen 5 will do fine. It's just that if you want to do like some intense Excel calculation, then the Ryzen 7 chipset will help you a bit. And that extra 400 ringgit, I think it's worth spending if you're gonna use that Ryzen 7 chipset. Other than that, I just can't believe the price of this laptop is only at 3,299, especially with such a gorgeous screen. <laughs> and so that's it. That's, that's all we have to share with you about this laptop. It's surprisingly good. <laughs> 